going to share with you some ideas that are remarkably simple and yet can be very difficult to do. Yet, I believe that if we do them, that they can change our lives. That has been true for me. The idea is Gracious Space. Gracious Space is the creation of the Center for Ethical Leadership, which is located in Seattle, and for 25 years has been a pioneer in ethical leadership for the common good. I want to ask you to think for a moment about these two words, gracious space. What do they make you think of? What comes to mind when you hear these two words? What feelings do they evoke in you? Who was there? Can you think of a time that you might have experienced something that you would call a gracious space? And what made it unique enough for you to think of it this morning? What were the characteristics? Who was there? Well, we've asked this question to thousands of people in hundreds of organizations over 40 states and 35 countries over the last 20 years. Some of the things that they share with us are gracious space was the time that our team was really creative, or gracious space was when I was with my friend and I could just be myself without feeling judged, or gracious space is when I'm at church or in the woods. One of my favorites was gracious space is grandma's house. There's all the milk and cookies you want and no chores. <laughs> Somebody's definition. And then we asked them, so what are the words that you would use to describe these unique moments that you can remember so clearly? And they use words like, it was inviting, it was comfortable, I felt safe, emotionally safe. Compassion, curiosity, we were having a good time. I could be myself. So these are all words that we can use to describe ourselves and describe gracious space. So what I'm going to offer you here today is something that I believe can help us with connection. Connection is our theme today. Gracious space is a way that we can connect with ourselves, we can connect with others, we can connect with people at work, in our communities. I think it works in any sort of relationship. So I'm going to share with you the four key elements of gracious space that we've learned about by doing gracious space for the last 25 years. The first one is the spirit of gracious space. I call it the small s spirit. And what this means to us is that gracious space, that you can be gracious space. It's not necessarily something you need to do, although there are that parts of it but you can be gracious space. How you show up matters. What walks with you when you come into a room? What are the qualities that you become known for? It's something that, that is part of who we are. And people learn to expect and rely on these qualities that we have. We all have them. You can think for yourself, well, boy, how compassionate am I and how curious am I? And what happens is, people start to say, oh, good, you know, Bob's here, because Bob asks really good questions. Or Joni's here, yay, because Joni's a good listener, and I know I'm going to be able to talk when Joni's here. Or, thank goodness, Maya's here, because she lightens the mood, even though our work is serious. So we become known for these things. So what we do is um, our spirit becomes contagious. And for me, this means that I need to be intentional every day about what contagion I'm spreading to the people nearby. <laughs> is it a positive experience or is it a negative experience? Another way to think about it is, is like boats create a wake. What is the wake that I leave behind when I pass through? So what we do in our workshops is we ask people to identify what are some characteristics that you bring to the spirit of gracious space? and we give them a list. I have one outside if you want to pick one up on your way out the door. And they choose, and I say, okay, pick one for right now that you're feeling particularly strong in, and write it down and put it on a name tag. And they're like, whoa, okay. So they do it, because they're good sports. And then I say, now I'm going to ask you to stand up and walk around the room and introduce yourself as that characteristic. No names. So people walk around and they say things like, hi, I'm willing to be influenced. <laughs> Or, hi, I'm curious. Or, hi, I'm listening deeply. And you should just see the energy that happens in the room when we do that. And you're thinking, oh, good, 
Somebody's here who's listening deeply. Thank God they were the only ones in a group of 30. <laughs> we often get a lot of, hi, I'm interjecting humor. So I ask them to do activities later on in the workshop that takes a little bit of bravery. But the whole idea is that this is our best stuff. And when we allow ourselves to introduce ourselves with our best stuff, how that can change our connections. Imagine if you were to start your next meeting this way. Rather than a, a reading of the minutes or a round of introductions, or worse, no introductions at all. I don't know how many meetings I've been in that people just dive into the work. What if you were to do a round and say, well, here's the intention I'm bringing today. I really want to be a good partner, or I really want to be compassionate. What is the quality, what is the spirit of gracious space that you are bringing? Because even, uh, even as it's true that the spirit of gracious space lives within us as individuals, it also lives within us as a group. And groups become known for something as well. You know what it feels like when you walk into a room and there's been a meeting just before you, and you're like, whoa, I wonder what just happened in here. There's that spirit of something. Right? It's contagious. Or you walk into a room and you're like, wow, I'm sorry I missed it. What was happening here? So the invitation from Gracious Space is to be intentional. How do you want to show up as individuals and as groups to claim your Gracious Space? The next aspect of Gracious Space is the setting. This is simply the physical environment where the interaction or the work, the conversation takes place. What's the furniture like? What's the lighting? Are there windows? Can people see each other? Is there coffee? Is there chocolate? It goes a long way to creating a gracious space, I'll tell you right now. And again, it's just about being intentional. We have here a room this morning where you're, all eyes are on the speaker. That's intentional. Sometimes I'm in workshops and all eyes are on the speaker, and I say, no, this is not going to work. We need to have people at round tables. I want them talking to each other. The setting has to match your purpose. Your, your means must meet your ends that you have in mind. Let me give you a couple of examples. I once worked with a woman um, at a local utility, and she said, Pat, I've only got one extra chair in my office, and it's full of reports. And after we talked about Gracious Space, she called me the next week, and she said, I took the reports off my chair. Now when people come to my office, they can sit down, and our meetings are so much better. <laughs> like, voila, this stuff is free. This is what I love about it. Another example that happened to me in my office, my colleague Dale, we were going to have a, a conversation that was going to be a bit challenging, a bit conflict, and we have a rectangular conference room and a square table, so very Euclidean. He took the table and he tilted it kitty corner. I said, Dale, I know what you're doing. You're trying to get me to see from a new perspective. He said, yes, I am. And I thought, even though I knew what he was doing, it worked because normally I sit here so I can see out the window, because I love air. But this time I had to sit here. And darned if it didn't remind me to have a different perspective during the meeting. So the setting influences our thinking. And it's just an invitation to remember that and make some changes. This is a picture of a, of a mural at a playground at a school in California. It's an elementary school. And the, you can see in front, um, it's a bench. And they call this, they painted this wall, they call it their gracious space bench. And this is where the children go during recess when they need to take a little time out and think about their behavior and how they want to treat each other differently on the playground. I love this. This is a physical reminder of gracious space. The idea about being intentional about our space, we so often forget. We're busy, we come in, we just sit down, we get to work. So it's an invitation to just take two minutes and think about the furniture. Is this going to work for me? Because if you don't, your whole good intent could go sideways. And I have one of those examples as well. <clears throat> My colleague Dale, who I just mentioned, was once invited to give a talk for employees at a hospital who had been let go. And this was supposed to be one of these lift you up, next chapter of your career, rah, rah, gift to these folks who had been fired. To get to the meeting room, Dale had to come in the back door past the boiler room, past a room called the morgue, to a small room with no windows at the end of the hall. And this is where these poor souls were coming to think about the next uplifting part of their lives. Needless to say, it did not get off to a good start. But Dale's very talented, so he did save the day. 
So spirit and setting. These are the first two elements of gracious space. I think of them as daily gracious space. You can do them without a lot of fanfare. You don't really have to tell anybody. You can just say, these are my characteristics of gracious space. I'm going to put one in each pocket, and off I go to have my day. And I'm just going to pay attention to my physical setting, maybe my workspace, my bedroom, my living room, the kitchen, where my meetings happen, and just see if I can make it a little bit more friendly, conducive, bring in toys. Some people had ice cream socials. I mean, whatever you want to do. These are the two. The next two are a little bit more complicated because they involve other people. You know how that tends to be true? You try to do something and other people get involved. This one is called Invite the Stranger. And if spirit is probably the most important aspect of gracious space, I think Invite the Stranger is the most difficult. I call it the crux move because here is where we need to invite the other in. And this is very active voice. When we were first doing this work at the center, we called it a place where the stranger feels welcome. Very nice, but very passive. Like, not a lot of responsibility for me. The stranger shows up, I hope they feel welcome. This is, if you need a different set of ideas, perspectives, somebody's voice is missing, go get it. Get up and go find whose voice do you need at the table. Why do we do this? This could be very inconvenient. It could be very uncomfortable. It could be maybe a bit more time consuming. So why would we bother to go invite that which is strange to us, whether it's ideas or people or types of people? Because we believe that we'll be smarter as a result. That being inclusive is how we get things done. We've heard a lot today about creativity and bringing people together and learning from difference. That's what this is all about. An example, when we were with the center early on, the center was asked to facilitate a meeting about the homeless situation in Seattle. Great. It's all about the common good. And to this meeting came folks from the religious community and businesses and the downtown association and neighbors who cared and government officials and nonprofits. And who did we forget? The homeless. Whose voice is missing? This is what we need to ask. And how are we going to be changed by listening to these voices? Peter Senge says, difference is an opportunity to learn something about the system. I say, if you are successful at inviting difference, be careful because you may get conflict. And people say, well, I didn't want conflict. I just wanted to you know, be smarter and bring in different opinions. Well, be careful because different opinions are different. <laughs> and they may make us uncomfortable. And they may sound like conflict. So gracious space is more than the floating leaf logo that I showed you at the beginning. It is a place for our most difficult conversations. In fact, the more difficult it is, I believe, the more gracious space we need. Because if we don't invite these voices, our change efforts are likely to fail. And I often think of gracious space, some people think, oh, it's a safe grandma's house kind of space. I think of it, you know, it's real space. It's brave space. This is about accepting what's on offer. This is the yes and. You know, somebody offers something, and how do you say yes to it and build on it, rather than saying, yeah, but. I often think of uh, invite the stranger as the business case for gracious space. Some people we work with say, gracious space, it's kind of woo-woo. It's like, OK, would you like to make better decisions? They say, of course. It's like, well, here you go. Invite the stranger is how you get smarter before you make decisions. My friend Richard uses this technique. He uh, worked for a global health organization, and he was responsible for creating a strategic plan for meningitis in several African countries. And he knew that this was going to be a very difficult sell. So he says, Pat, you know, sometimes you can't get the stranger in the room. So what he would do is literally leave an open chair, and that was the seat for the stranger. And at various points during their strategic planning process, they would stop and they would say, what would our critical friends say? And these are friends that are critical to the project and friends that are critical of the project. And by considering these different points of view, they were able to make their strategic plan much more robust to consider the resistance that they were going to get, and they were able to get it 
passed and accepted faster and easier than ever before. And Richard says, you know, Pat, sometimes inviting the stranger is not only impossible, but it's very annoying. So this is another way that you can just leave the chair open for that person rather than have them there for real. Although, I would always try to go for the real. Our final element of gracious space is learning in public. And this is where it all comes together, where all the puzzle pieces come together, where we bring our best spirit into a setting that helps us do our work, We've invited difference. Now's the time to learn together. We might just hear something new. We might just change our mind while other people are watching. So this can be a very vulnerable place to say, I don't know. I'm not sure. We haven't done this before. Especially for leaders, parents, who are supposed to know the answer. But in these times, we can't know all of the answers. So having a culture where we say, you need to unlearn some facts. You need to not be so sure that you're right about everything. And reconsider your opinions so that you can truly participate in a democratic community. And this is where I like to remind people that Gracious Space ultimately is a collaborative leadership model and that it is um, best used when we are trying to cross boundaries and work collaboratively collaboratively together. So I've given you several things to think about in terms of gracious space. None of them are new. In fact, they're probably as old as dirt. But what the center has done, in my opinion, is to package them in such a way that we can remember them. And it offers a common language. And this is what people tell us can be most helpful about gracious space. And the reason it matters for me the reason I do this work is I believe humans have not stopped evolving. You know, we've figured out the thumbs and we're kind of got the erect thing going on. I believe we're continuing to find ways to connect and to care for each other and be kind to each other. I believe that is our next stage of evolution. That is why I do this work, because I believe gracious space is one way to get there. And that if we can turn toward each other and dance together, something different will happen. Thank you. <laughs>